I'm going to challenge you, Brady. Do you remember some calculus from school days? No, I don't. Good. Okay. I I think a lot of number five viewers will remember calculus, don't you? Good. Yeah, you remember calculus. But I want to show you a calculus question. And even if, Brady, you're not familiar enough, I think you'll be interested by the conclusion of it. Uh, let's find out. We're going to do some integration. And we're going to integrate a familiar function. We've talked about trigonometry before. But this time it's not just the integral of sine x. It's the integral of sine x multiplied by cosine x. dx, uh, that's with respect to x. So it's just saying I'm using x variables. And I'm using an indefinite integral for the sake of whether or not you remember this stuff. I'm not putting limits in. We'll talk more about what difference that makes at the end. That's the question. It's an absolutely standard looking question from sort of A-level exam sort of difficulty. If any viewers want to try it before I talk more about it, I think now is a good time. In what, what's becoming a theme for me, I want to do this in more than one way. Uh, because if you do things in more than one way, you should find that the answers tally up and then you have more confidence in the answers and you might get insights as I've maybe talked about in other places. Uh, but let's do method one to start. Method one for me here is using a trigonometric fact, which is the idea that sine of double of an angle, this is just the sine function with two of a thing, it, there's this identity to say it's the same as two lots of sine x cos x. And trigonometric identities let you transform trigonometry into other types of trigonometry. And this one is obviously useful in our case. We've got sine x cos x on one side, uh, so we can turn it into something else. If I just write is a half sine two x, then I've got exactly what I had in my integration earlier. Very quickly, I'm going to get sloppy in my notation and stop writing these brackets. I hope you don't get offended, Brady. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> okay, so my integration can turn into this. So I'm actually going to label this as i, so I can always refer. That's my original question. If I get i equals a number or an expression, I'm done. So i equals the integral, changing that for this, is a half sine 2x. And I'm sure some viewers will have tried this method. I could take the half out of the front, uh, and this is the bit that maybe you remember, but I can integrate sine x. The integral of sine is negative cos, or negative cosine. But I've got to do a couple of other things. I've got the 2x here, and this is where you have to sort of think about the chain rule. It's going to be something to do with cosine 2x with a negative sine. But if I differentiate that, which is the inverse process, you end up with a 2. So I need a half. That is not an integration sign anymore. Those square brackets mean I've done the integration. So tidying this up. Uh, I'm going to write negative quarter cosine 2x. And before anyone shouts at me, all A-level students will remember to add a plus c, because when you integrate, you have a constant coming up. More on that later. That's method one, and there's not a lot of insight. That feels like it's just the answer to the question. Uh, the punchline comes when we try another method. Method two. There's a neat method for this one. You can realise that uh, sine and cosine differentiate to each other, which is kind of the inverse of what we're doing. But if you spot a situation where you've got two, a product of two things and one of them is the differential of the other, there's a neat shortcut. So that's what I'm going to exploit in this one. I'm going to notice that if I rewrote this as the integral of sine x times cosine x to the power one, which feels completely pointless. I mean, you know that's the same thing. But a lot of A-level students will get used to the fact that if you've got a bracket with any power up here and you've got the differential of what's inside on the outside, there's a neat shortcut. So you can try an integration by just integrating this bracket and raising the power by one, which would mean writing cosine x squared. I'm going to write y equals here. And I can check whether this is what I've written the word try. I don't think that's the answer, but if I differentiate that, it should go back to where we started. So that's a way of sort of naively integrating things. You, you try an answer and check if it differentiates back. So if you differentiate this one, the two comes down the front and you get cosine x to the one. And then you've got to do the chain rule, multiply the differential of the inside. So multiply that by negative sine x. Tidying that up, you get negative two sine x cos x, which I invite you to compare with our original thing. It's pretty close. It's just a negative two out. Um, so actually, if I multiply this by negative a half, that will track through and compensate. So all of that. So I'm pretty sure that that is the integral. Let me write i equals negative a half cosine x squared plus c. First observation, how's your memory? It's different. It's different. So which one's correct? Well, we're not done yet. Before we answer which one's correct, I want to show you at least one more method. Third one is very similar. I'm going to do it much quicker. It's almost the mirror of the second one. So let's just separate them, but it's going to be very close. The idea being that sine and cosine differentiate to each other. So I picked cosine to try for this one, knowing that the chain rule thing I did here would give me close to what I want. 
I can do the other way around. So I could try y equals sine x squared. And if I differentiate that, you get two sine x to the power one, and then multiply by the differential of what's inside, which is cosine x. This is even neater. So this is just two sine x cos x, which is very like what I wanted. It's just got a factor of two out. So that means if I put a half here, it would have worked exactly. So that means the integral is a half sine x squared plus c, which is different. I'm making a big sigh out of this because I think you've got the point by now is that these methods are all valid. Uh, I've checked them, but they do seem to be giving me different answers, which we will need to resolve because there should be one answer. Uh, let's do one more before we resolve it. Can't those answers be the same? Can't. You tell me. I don't know. Maybe they're the same thing. Is sine x the same as cosine x? Well, I'd imagine not. No. But I don't know what C is, and there's halves, and minuses, and... It's a pleasure working with you, Brady. You are asking the right questions about the right things. And let's answer them in good time. Method four. This is my favourite one. I like this one. Uh, let's set up the question again, just in case everyone's forgotten. This time, we've got sine x times cos x. It's a, it's a product multiplication. But there's a rule in integration called integration by parts, which quite often deals with products. So integration by parts, just to remind everyone, the integral of a thing which is something times something else, you can rewrite. If you think of the product as something that's been differentiated and something that hasn't, then you can rewrite it as the integral of uv subtract the integral of du dx v. That's non-trivial formula, and it's not obvious why that works, but the point is that you can take an integration of two things uh, which are difficult and turn it into something which doesn't need integrating and something which is kind of the other way around. So the thing that was differentiated is now integrated and the thing that was not differentiated is now differentiated. And if you can arrange for that to make your life simpler, this is a good way through an integration question. And that was your lesson of integration by parts over. We're going to use it. I'm going to call uh, this one u and this one dv dx. So that's sort of matching up with this idea here, which means I have to get the other versions of it. So u equals sine x. And then differentiating that gives me cosine x, dv dx equals cosine x, and integrating that, v equals integral of cos is sine x. So this is my little table, I can use all these things over here. So i becomes uv, that's sine times sine, so sine x times sine x is sine squared x. I'm now using some notation which everybody uses, by the way. Before I was writing uh, sine x in brackets squared, which no one argues with, but no one writes. This is terrible notation, but I'm going to deal with it. And if you want to talk to me about why it's terrible notation, write polite emails to me. <laughs> <laughs> Only polite ones. Uh, it confuses with function notation. Anyway, that's the uv bit. And then subtract, following this formula, the integral of du, that's a cosine x, times v, which is sine x. Uh, does this look familiar, Brady? Uh, that's, what, that's i again, isn't it? Yeah. It's just written the other way around, but multiplication could happen either way around. So it feels like we've gone in circles and we're like, well, we haven't made anything easier. I still don't know how to integrate that. Except if I write it as i, I've got a formula here that i equals sine squared x minus i. And they don't cancel out. If I add i to both sides, I get 2i equals sine squared x, and i equals half sine squared x. Uh, but I did forget a plus c. That should have happened up here somewhere. Half sine squared x. This was method four. And I like it because the integration by parts feels like a magic formula, but you get this neat cancellation. The trouble is, it's not the same as the other answers. So it's the same as that one. And there's my notation issue. That, that's what that means. It's not the same as that one. And it's not the same as that one. And majority rules go with the yeah. So so only one can be right, correct? Although you did ask a very astute question earlier. Do you remember what you asked? We don't know the value of c. Yeah, so c is a constant. And when you're doing an indefinite integration, you have to leave it as an unknown constant. And t unless you put limits on it, which means you're calculating an area, you don't know what that constant is. But these answers do look different. So by way of reconciling them, let's sort out whether majority should rule and only one of them is correct, or if there's something else going on. And it's probably time we get GeoGebra out to have a look at these functions, if that's OK. Ah. So, I mean, let's, let's look at the original function we were trying to integrate first of all. Sine x times cosine x looks like that. Actually looks like a sine wave. Uh, that's not a coincidence. In fact, the first method we did turned it into sine of 2x. It's a sine wave with twice the speed. It doesn't really matter what it looks like, although you should draw functions if you're going to integrate them, I think. The first answer we got, I'm going to flip back to method one. Negative a quarter cos 2x. I'm going to plot that on the screen. I'm actually going to hide the original function. Negative a quarter times cosine of 2x. That is what the answer should look like, apparently. A 
according to method one. Method two got us negative a half cos squared x. Let's plot that one. If they're the same answer, this should be the same function, right? So negative a half cos x. And I'm going to put that in brackets and square it. Because notation gets confusing, we've already been through this. Yeah. What's nice is that it looks the same pattern, but it's not the same function. It's shifted. Uh, let's do the other one, which to cut a long story short, a half sine x squared. I don't think I know what's going to happen here. You think you know what's going to happen? I think most people know what's going to happen, and they're kicking themselves if they didn't get it immediately because integration, oh look, it's the same function but shifted, and the last one actually got us the same answer. So the point is, these are not the same answers. And if you forgot to write plus c at the end, and plus c at the end, and plus c at the end on all of them, they would be different functions. But that plus c means if you add a constant on the end of a function, what happens? It just shifts up or down. Really salutary lesson when you're doing integration, don't forget the plus c because you will be wrong. These answers are not the same unless you take into account that they're the same barring a shift up or down. So they are kind of the same. They are kind of the same. And, and that's I, the reason I would like this is that the, the same question, which is relatively easy for A-level standard things, does turn out to what have what looks like three different answers and reminds you that they would be different if you forget the plus c. And if you ask a computer to integrate this, computers can do it, I'll show you what happens. You feel like it, it can't plump for all three at once, it's got to pick one. Uh, luckily, Jojo will do some integration, so integral, integral of sine x, cosine x. It's actually given me this last one here, half sine squared x. So it's plumped for the last one, the majority rule, in fact, the one we got twice. But something else has happened, and this is really subtle, and I'm really glad that Jojo does that. It's also made this little C bit at the bottom, and it's hidden it. That blue thing means it's not visible. But if I uh, make it visible, it means it's made a little slider up here and saying it doesn't know what C1 is, because if you change it, the graph shifts up and down. So built into this piece of software is the saying, if you ask for an integral that's indefinite, it can only give you an answer up to a constant. And what's a relief is if you do the maths on this, you get three looking different answers but they are the same as long as you add the plus C. Which technique would a school student have used, do you think? I think the, uh, what they call the double angle formula, which is the first one we did, where turning sine x cos x into sine of 2x is the best recommendation I'd give to an A-level student, so 18 year old, because it's neat. Um, and it's a good lesson knowing trig identity because they help you tend complicated things into simpler things you can work with. Having said that, I really like the integration by parts thing because it's that, nice self-referential thing. You think you're not making any progress and then it all drops out. And the other method's good too, because uh, it's not obvious, but when you actually do that method, it's quite quick. So I've dodged your question, I think, haven't I? <laughs> the thing I take away from this is C really covers your butt, doesn't it? Yeah, um, and maybe the important, understanding what you're doing when integrating, if you don't have limits on integration, you're finding an area under a function without telling anybody where you're gonna start counting area from. So it's like drawing, coloring in under these graphs but you're not saying, where's the start point? It could be at the origin, it could be somewhere else. And that's why when you do an indefinite integration, you are generating an area function, not the area function, because there is more than one and it's only different by a C. There you go. Uh, that was your A-level integration lesson, Brady. Uh, we've pretty much covered all of A-level techniques of integration in that, so uh, exam next week. I'm ready. I seem to recall I was pretty good at calculus in high school, but now, I remember absolutely nothing. It's like a foreign language to me. If you'd like to refresh your memory or learn from scratch, well, there's nowhere better than today's episode sponsor, Brilliant. Rather than just watching or reading, you interact with these online courses and lessons. The absolute best way to get something wired into your brain or rewired into your brain is using stuff like this. I love all these sliders and gizmos gives me a better feel for what I'm doing. So whatever your age or skill set, Brilliant is going to have something for you. And by the way, you can get 20% off their premium subscription by going to brilliant.org slash number file. Check them out. Maybe like me, you can recapture some long lost knowledge. There will be a link in the video description. Definitely do the number 20. Could we, for example, work our way up? We can do one. Can we do two? Turns out two is really easy. You can see that each two triangles makes one. 